My family has a camping timeshare, and we used to go camping for weeks at a time in the summer. My dad had to work, so he would stay at home Monday to Thursday, and come up to meet us at the campgrounds Friday to Sunday. The campgrounds had a pool, a miniature golf course, and basketball courts. We were there for so long that my mum became comfortable with letting us wander, since there was only one entrance and exit. One year, when I was around eight, but very small for my age, so I looked around five, I met a little boy who was camping with his single father for a few days. He came to our campsite a lot and knew we were staying for a while. I was pretty sad when he left, but his dad said they would come back sometime soon. A few weeks later, his dad returned and came to the campsite right after my mum had left to take a shower. He told me his son was coming back later that week. He asked me where my parents were, and I told him that my dad won't be here until Friday, and my mum always takes a shower at this time. He said goodbye and left. The next day, he came by at the same time and told me that he had just found some kittens and asked if I wanted one. I of course said yes, and he told me he kept them in his tent and I could come pick one out. Now this guy wasn't a stranger. My mum had met him when he picked up his son from our campsite, so I didn't get that creepy stranger vibe and felt completely fine going with him. As we were walking towards his campsite, he then told me he had actually moved them to his truck so they wouldn't get too hot, which made absolute sense to me. He pointed to his truck, which was right outside the gates of the entrance. I began walking towards the entrance with the guy when my dad pulled up. He had gotten the day off work so he could spend more time with us. He asks what's going on, and I say, Tommy's dad said he has kittens in his truck and I can have one. My dad then stepped out of the car and told me to run back to the campsite. So I did exactly as I was told. When my dad got back, he told me to never go alone with an adult anywhere, even if I know them. I asked my mum years later about the whole event, and she told me my dad kicked the crap out of him and called the cops. Last summer, my boyfriend and I went camping in some nature preserve in Pennsylvania. I can't remember the name. It was pretty primitive camping, no cell service, and we only saw two other people there in this huge location. My boyfriend immediately said these two people seemed after him right away. The first person was a woman who had parked her truck off the trail and the hood was open. I don't really notice these types of things, but my boyfriend said it looked to him like she was waiting for someone to pull up beside her and offered to help her with her truck. Normally, my boyfriend is the type to at least offer to call someone, but he said she skeeved him out enough that he didn't even want to draw her attention. The next person we saw drove by several times whilst we were setting up. Every time he drove by slowly and looked at us. I didn't even notice this, however, until my boyfriend pointed out that he had already done that twice. Whether these two people had planned anything sinister or not, we didn't know. The real story didn't occur until we were startled awake at 3am. It was incredibly loud and sudden. I couldn't describe it or even compare it to anything. But my boyfriend said it sounded to him similar to a chain gun revving up or someone using some large tool to scrape gravel. My boyfriend jumped up and looked out the little window of the tent. The sound happened again, again and again and it was getting noticeably closer each time. I was about to piss myself, but my boyfriend told me it was probably miles away. I didn't question this because loud noises can be heard from miles off, right? Well, later, my boyfriend told me he only said that because he didn't want to scare me. It really sounded like it was coming from right down the little dirt road. At one point, he said he suspected it was right in front of our campsite. The only reason he didn't tell me to get out and dart for the car was because he was afraid it was someone trying to scare us in order to lure us out of the tent for some dreadful reason. 
He whispered for me to just go back to sleep. I should have noticed he was whispering and knew something was wrong, since otherwise he'd just speak normally, right? However, I could not, because every little sound I heard outside sounded like someone sneaking up to the tent. Eventually, my boyfriend told me to get out and help him pack up. It was maybe 20 minutes after the sound stopped. He held our only weapon, a machete, in front of him. It was a full moon, or close to it, so we didn't need a light. Whilst we were packing quickly, I noticed an empty beer can close to our dead campfire. It wasn't there when we went to sleep at around 10pm, and neither of us even brought any beer. Thankfully, we got out of there, and for the rest of that trip, we either camped in areas well populated by other campers, or we got a hotel room. Before I continue with the final story, if you've enjoyed this video so far, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to see future content from me, as well as help me in the algorithm. Thank you. It was the summer of 2016, and I had just married my longtime girlfriend. Over the course of our 12 year relationship, we had travelled to the mountains several times in both summer and winter, for camping, but also to stay in nice mountain hotels and snowboard the slopes. Naturally, we both agreed this was how we wanted to spend the first few weeks of our marriage. We booked a 20 day stay at a mountainside campground on the other side of the country. We also decided to bring our dogs with us, as they too love being outdoors, and we generally bring them camping anyway. After two days of road tripping, we had arrived, quickly set up and settled in for a good long stay on the mountain. It was beautiful. A couple of days into our trip, and we had already met a bunch of fellow campers. We are very experienced campers, so we generally attract a lot of attention from novice campers, asking for tools or supplies as they see we are well set up. We are usually more than happy to help people get situated if they need matches, cream or sugar, or help setting up their equipment. It was day four or five when she first made her presence known to us. I will refer to this person as she or her as we never learned her name. We were sitting down under the shade of the large pine tree at the edge of our site, drinking beers and playing cards when she seemingly appeared out of nowhere. She was just suddenly right there. Can I pet your dog? She said. Even my dogs didn't see her approach as the very sound of her voice triggered them into a startled frenzy. As the dogs were worked up already, I politely told her no. Then, she just stood there, at the edge of our sight, didn't say a word, just sort of existing, but not really doing anything. She wasn't exactly staring at us, or looking at anything in particular. I asked her if she needed anything, and she said no. After a few minutes, she walked off. I work with people with brain injuries, so I've had my fair share of experiences with unusual behaviours, including people with poor social skills. So I wasn't about to write this person off as creepy just yet, but she had my attention. I casually watched her walk off and enter a campsite across the path and a few sites down from us. There was already a small tent set up in the site, but she proceeded to pull an even smaller single person tent from her backpack and began setting it up. The day prior, we saw two young girls set up the other tent and were clearly the occupants of the site. There was no further interaction with her that day, although we did notice that the owners of the other tent on the site were not around at all that day and we didn't see them return that night. Well, the next morning, I am walking to the camp showers to clean up for the day. As I walked past her site, I saw she was sitting in her little tent reading a book. The door to the tent was open. I paid no attention and kept on my way to take my shower. Once I finished my shower, I began walking back. I noticed her tent was now closed but was jiggling about, so I knew someone was in there. Then she made her presence known in a big way. Just as I was approaching her site on the way to mine, she unzipped her tent and I immediately saw that she was completely nude. She then positioned herself just inside the tent at the door 
and let out this over the top, full body stretch and held her arms way up towards the sky while pushing her chest forward like it was some kind of mating ritual designed just for me. While she did this, she let out what I can only describe as an exotic moan. It was pretty obvious she was putting on a show for me. I continued on my way to my site and told my wife about the display I had just witnessed. We both laughed it off and moved on with our plans to day hike a good trail to a waterfall. The trailhead for this hike was accessible from the campgrounds, so we didn't have to drive to get there. We just walked the additional two kilometers to the trail. We walked at a good pace so that when we got to the trail, we decided to stop for a few minutes and take some photos of the surrounding mountains before heading into the thicker bush. After sitting there for maybe five minutes whilst my wife was taking pictures, she emerged from the trail that leads towards the campground. At first, I thought, okay, coincidence. She's staying here and this is a pretty common trail. But then, she noticed that I saw her and she stopped dead in her tracks and just stood there. Same demeanor as our first encounter. Just standing, not doing anything in particular, but also sending creep vibes our way. This was the first time I said to my wife, I think we have a stalker. Confused, my wife then looked to where I was looking and was immediately a little creeped out. Once again, I thought whatever, maybe she's just hiking the trail, no big deal. So we continued on the trail at a good pace and she maintained a consistent distance behind us. Our dogs at this point are a little distracted by her and our youngest dog kept turning around to watch her. I got a little fed up with the dog constantly stopping to look back, so I decided we would stop for some water and let this woman pass. Well, what did she do? She just stopped walking when we stopped and once again just stood there. Okay, so now we were genuinely concerned because this was approaching horror, suspense movie creep level and I started to wonder what this girl's intentions were. Standing motionless at that distance and refusing to pass us just ramped up the oh shit factor to about nine. So my wife and I agreed to just give up and cut the hike short by taking the shorter loop, which was only another half kilometer ahead, and head back to our camp. We managed to get some distance between us by jogging every time we would make a turn and she was out of sight. We didn't see her again until later that night. That night, my wife decided to take an evening shower at the camp showers. When she returned to our camp, she told me our stalker was in the bathroom, also taking a shower. This time, however, she was with two other girls and appeared to be getting ready for a night at the club. There was a nearby ski town that had a few nightclubs and bars, so it was reasonable to see the girls getting ready for a night out. The two girls she was with were the two we saw previously set up at her site. My wife explains that she quickly picked up on the fact that the two girls and our stalker friend were not well known to each other. It was clear that the two girls were close friends with plans to go out partying and our stalker was making an attempt to be friends and sort of invited herself to join them in their night out. Now, we know the ski town well and the girls kept reinforcing that they were meeting at a specific restaurant before going to the bar. It was currently 10.30 p.m. and we know the restaurant they were telling her to go to was closed at 10 p.m. They were lying to her about their plans. The stalker kept asking them too. Are you sure it's this place? Are you sure? They convinced her and she then left to return to her tent to finish getting ready whilst the two friends stayed in the bathroom to finish their makeup. My wife went on to explain how after she left, the two friends were then mocking and making fun of our stalker. They were young 20-somethings, acting like little girls in elementary school. My wife had no time for that. Creepy stalker or not, she had to say something to the girls for their behaviour. My wife called them out on their behaviour. Well, putting all the catty bitch bullying aside, the girls explained to my wife that the stalker girl had set up her tent on their site when they were staying with a friend in the ski town. When they returned, they found her living at their site without invitation. She had just taken it upon herself to take a little corner of their site without knowing them at all. The girls said that they were upset with her and trying to make her feel uncomfortable so she would leave. But she wouldn't leave. Of course my wife asked them why they didn't just report her to the park warden. The excuse they gave was that they were leaving the next day and didn't want to make a huge deal out of it. So whatever happened between them and the fake late dinner plans and clubbing is unknown to us. 
At about 3am that same night, we were all awoken to a blood-curdling scream right outside our camper. At first, I whispered, Holy shit, that must be a wild animal. My wife was trembling, dogs barking, and I was startled but curious. I peeled back the window cover to see her standing motionless on the path outside our trailer. I had the window cover down maybe 8 to 10 centimeters when she appeared to make direct eye contact with me. My heart rate skyrocketed. What the actual fuck? After gazing in my general direction for what seemed like an eternity, she calmly turned around and walked back to her tent. I went to make sure our trailer was locked. After a good hour and a stiff whiskey, we managed to get back to sleep. So, the next day was a Friday. We had friends from a nearby major city coming up the mountains to spend the weekend with us. We hadn't seen them in a while, so we were excited for a couple of days together. Well, they were not at our site for more than 15 minutes, and as they were setting up their tent, she mysteriously appeared out of nowhere yet again. Like bam, there she was. But now, this time, she was actually in our site. I hadn't had a chance to tell our friends about her before she arrived, so they were a little more friendly than I was. She asked me once again if she could pet my dog, who during all of this is barking at her. I think I said something like, She isn't being friendly towards you right now, so I'd prefer if you didn't. She didn't pet my dog, but she also just stood there staring at me, like she was considering how she would dismember my limbs. She then noticed our friend's tent brand as he is still setting up, and commented on how it's the same model as hers, although a larger sleeping capacity. My buddy had picked up on the creep vibes and my general displeasure with her presence, so he just responded with, Oh yeah, cool, and kept setting it up. She started grabbing at the tent pegs and picked up the hammer and said she would help him set it up because she has experience with it. My buddy declined and asked for his tools back. Cue the fucking psychopath stare down, but this time she has a hammer in hand, adding to the oh shit factor. She literally just dropped everything right there and ran off. I go on to explain the last few days to our friends, and they agree we need to keep an eye on her. So, by this time, the two girlfriends whose sight she had hijacked were packed up and gone. It's now Friday night, and we had been drinking all day, so we were feeling pretty good. It's roughly 11pm, when she walked over to our site again. She said, Hey, you guys seem to have a lot of extra room with the tent and the camper. Do you think I could stay with you guys tonight? We could have a lot of fun in there together. My buddy is feeling pretty good from all the day beers, so he's pretty forward when he replied. Did you just propose a gangbang to us? Now this whole time, I was just sitting in my camp chair, with my whiskey, taking this all in. She wasn't really taking notice of me at all so far. Then, she smiled, turned her head, and looked directly down at me, and said, I like your friend. She then turned around, and walked away into the darkness of the night, towards the forest. We were all now terrified she was going to return, I decided right then and there that if we saw her again, in a creepy fashion, I'm calling the park warden. This was getting silly. Well, the night is winding down, so we all decided to walk together to the bathrooms to clean up for bed. My wife pulled on my hoodie and said, Babe, look. I looked over to see that the site she was set up on was completely destroyed. Shit everywhere. Just stuff, garbage, clothing, food, everywhere. I thought, okay, this was weird. Could this have been a bear? No, we would have heard it. I then noticed that the tent was gone. She was gone and left the site to complete mess. As luck would have it, the park patrol was completing their fire rounds and were at the messed up site when we were returning from the bathrooms. We told them there was a girl staying here by herself who was acting erratic and we suspected she was squatting on the site based on our conversation with the two girls from earlier in the week. We didn't see her again for the rest of our trip until the last full day. There is a great little lookout point not far from our site which had amazing views of the river and the valley below and it was a perfect evening to see the sunset behind the mountains. It was a lovely final send off to an otherwise beautiful honeymoon. Just when we thought we were done with her, she emerged once again from seemingly nowhere. We were sitting on a couple of chairs that are bolted in place at the viewpoint, taking pictures of the valley below. As my wife is looking through the camera viewfinder, she picks up on the woman in the distance. She was standing in the woods a little ways down the mountain towards the valley watching us. As her final act, she walked up the mountainside 
and sat right beside us on a boulder that was beside the chairs. She said nothing, just sat there. My wife had the brilliant idea of asking me to take one last picture of the scenery and she gave me a little wink. I picked up on her idea right away and I positioned myself so this woman was going to be in the picture. My wife wanted this lady's photo in the event something bad happens with her before we can leave the area. We took our final looks out at the beautiful scenery and we headed to our camp for the night. We didn't see or hear from her again. Upon reflection, we agreed it was obvious this woman had some serious mental health issues. She had zero social skills and we witnessed her attempt to make friends with those two girls that shafted her in a terrible way. That being said, she did things way beyond the realm of acceptable social awkwardness. There were moments I thought she would pull out a knife and kill us all where we stood. More than that, the stalking, the midnight screaming and running off into the woods at night was terrifying to us and I feel a story worthy of this sub. I do have the photo on a thumb drive somewhere and we'll see about uploading a pixelated photo if it's appropriate. To anyone else the picture just looks like a person is sitting in the shot. But to us, it's a reminder of our wild adventure and the start of our amazing marriage.